Welcome, this is Bill Osborne, City Manager in Douglasville. I hope you will stay tuned because in just a moment we'll have another on the agenda. And today we'll be talking about uh, have people in Douglasville, a very special group of people are involved in helping make this a better community in which we live. We'll also have interviews with a couple of these special citizens. So I hope you will stay tuned to On the Agenda. Now available at the Douglasville Welcome Center, the 2007 Downtown Keepsake. This year's Keepsake is a beautiful depiction of the Farmers and Merchants Bank building at the corner of Broad and Campbellton Streets. Don't miss this opportunity to own your piece of historic downtown Douglasville. This year's Downtown Keepsake is available now at the Douglasville Welcome Center, 6694 Broad Street, next to O'Neill Plaza. All local governments, and that includes the city of Douglasville, have four different groups of people that are instrumental in the operation of that local government. And today's On the Agenda, we intend to talk about one of those groups. Now, the first group we might identify are the voters who select the elected officials. The second group would be the elected officials, in Douglasville's case, that being a mayor and a seven-member city council. A third group of individuals who certainly are instrumental in the operation of that local government would be the paid employees, full-time and part-time, including, of course, the city manager who's responsible for the day-to-day -day operation of city government under, under the direction of the mayor and the city council. But there's a fourth group that is very important in the operation of local government, and those are the citizens who have volunteered to be on different boards, commissions, and committees. Uh, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. And actually, I've got a couple of visitors who will be joining me later in the program because we want to look at some of the boards, commissions, and committees in the city of Douglasville and talk about how individual citizens who are willing to be appointed to these play a valuable role in the, what takes place in the city of Douglasville and makes it the type of community that we have. Now, there are several things about boards, committees, and commissions that are alike, but there also are many differences. Obviously, each board, each commission, each committee has a different set of responsibilities. Usually, there are different requirements, uh, qualifications for people who serve on these. Uh, there may be different terms of office. The membership, the size of, of the body may be different. But I can tell you there are two things that they all have in common that every person who agrees to serve on a board, committee, or commission will find that they have to spend a good bit of time on doing this. In other words, he or she has to make a commitment uh, to fulfill those responsibilities. The second is I can assure you that what they do is important to the future of your community. And so today, that's what I want to talk about uh, are the City of Douglasville's boards, committees, and commissions. Uh, now, the appointments to these are made by the mayor and city council. Uh, and generally what takes place is that uh, we let people know that we have a vacancy coming up on one of these uh, bodies. Uh, then we will have uh, one or more individuals who will say, yes, I would like to be considered for this. We arrange a time for them to come before the mayor and the city council. Uh, usually that's about a 20-minute interview in which the, the applicant for appointment would come in uh, and answer questions uh, from the elected officials about their qualifications, about why they would like to be on this particular board, or commission, or committee, uh, and what they think they can offer the citizens of Douglasville through their service. Uh, and generally, they also have the opportunity to ask questions of the mayor and city council. And frequently, we find somebody who will come saying, yes, I would like to, to be a candidate, but first, I need to find out a little bit more about this particular function or I need to ask what the city is expecting me to do if I'm serving in this particular way. Uh, but let me just share with you uh, uh, the identification of these uh, boards uh, and I'll just go down the list that I have. We have the City of Douglasville Convention and Conference Center Authority, the Downtown Development Authority, the Zoning Board, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, the Keep Douglasville Beautiful Board, the Historic Preservation Commission, 
the Convention Investors Bureau Advisory Board, the Personnel Appeals Board. In addition to those which operate just for the geographic area of the city of Douglasville, we have appointments that the Mayor and City Council make as being the city representative or representatives on some boards that have a broader geographic coverage than just our city limits. Uh, these include the Douglas County Board of Health, the Douglas County Community Services Board, the WSA Board of Directors, the Douglas County Library Board, the Cultural Arts Council Board of Directors, the Douglas County Bicycle and Pedestrian Task Force Advisory Committee, the Habitat for Humanity Board, Core Board of Directors, the Douglas County Douglasville Animal Control Board, uh, and the Western Area Regional Radio Communications uh, Board. Now, for the remainder of, of the time on, on the agenda today, I want to talk about some of these boards, committees, and commissions. I won't talk about two of them, namely our Downtown Development Authority and Keep Douglas for Beautiful Board, because in the second part of the program, I'll have two special guests, Pat Smith, who serves on the DDA Board, Sam Hudson, who's a member of our Keep Douglas for Beautiful Board, and we'll talk in more detail about those two boards when they appear uh, before you later in the program. But what I would like to do at this time is, is just say that, that uh, I want people in Douglasville to be aware, as you've heard the list that I read, there are many opportunities where people can serve their community by being on one of these boards. And if you have an interest in being considered, if you will let me know, I would appreciate it. Now let me just cover uh, several of these boards very quickly. We have a zoning board. Uh, there are six members on this board, local businessman. Uh, Mike Lee is the chairman. This is an advisory board and they give recommendations to the mayor and city council on rezoning applications, special land use uh, uh, request, and various zoning matters. Uh, the zoning board and one other body perhaps has the most difficult task because they frequently are having to listen to different arguments of different parts of the community for or against, say, a rezoning application. The other body that has a very difficult task in that same way is the Historic Preservation Commission. It operates for the historic district, which is near and in, uh, in downtown and near downtown. And a lot of times they're having to make decisions on what one neighbor would like to do uh, on certain exterior things to his property, uh, which may not be in the best interest or might be in the best interest of the neighborhood. So that's a tough position that our citizen board is in. Another board is the Convention and Conference Center Authority. And this is the body that uh, basically was created under state law uh, and works with the mayor and the city council on our downtown conference center. Uh, as you know, we have a downtown conference center in the uh, posture at the moment of looking at maybe even doubling the size of that. And of course, the Convention and Conference Center Authority, Daniel Baker's the long-term chairman of that group, uh, and we work with them. Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, basically just what it says. It's a committee that provides uh, advice to our Parks and Recreation Department, but it does have one difficult task, and that is when there are conflicts in our athletic leagues, is this is the group that makes the decision between what one team may feel against another team or one individual may feel against another individual. Our CVB Advisory Board is a uh, comprised of people from the hotel industry, from the restaurant industry, some at-large members, and they work with our Convention and Visitors uh, Bureau staff in making sure that we have a good program to promote Douglasville. Our Personnel Appeals Board is the uh, citizen's body when there is a, a, uh, an appeal by one of our employees uh, that goes through the appeal process to the department director, then to the city manager. If the employee is unhappy with the decision that has been made up through that, including by the city manager, the appeal is to a citizen's personnel appeals board. Very important in our system of government. Uh, but uh, all of these committees operate uh, with open meetings, uh, but we're just uh, so pleased that we have a number of citizens who have agreed to serve their community in this way. And after the break, when we come back, 
I'll be talking with two of your fellow citizens who have said, yes, I will be of service to this community by serving on one of the boards and commissions. Hi, my name is Henry Mitchell III, Douglasville's Mayor Pro Tem. And my name is Rochelle Robinson, Zoning Board Member for the City of Douglasville. You're, You're watching, watching City TV. TV. Welcome back to On the Agenda. Previously, I had talked about the fact that the City of Douglasville has a number of boards, commissions, and committees. The membership of these are citizens, property owners, business owners, residents of the city who have made the decision to spend their time and energy and talents in helping make this community an even better place to live. I would like now to talk to two of the people who serve on these boards and commissions and I would ask you as you listen to what they have to say uh, to maybe generalize not only for just the board and commission that they serve on but they are representative in a sense of all the citizens we have who make this commitment uh, to make the city of Douglasville a better place to live. And my special guests today are Miss Pat Smith, who is a member of our Downtown Development Authority. Later I'll be talking with Mr. Sam Hudson, who's a member of the Keep Douglasville Beautiful Board. Uh, and I'll start though with uh, Miss Smith, who's with us today. Welcome. Thank you, Bill. And uh, uh, Pat, you've been a valuable member of two of our boards and commissions. Uh, you decided uh, to accept appointment back in June of 2003 mm -hmm. to the city's Historic Preservation Commission. You served on that commission for almost two years and then were appointed to the Downtown Development Authority uh, to complete an unexpired term, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, of course, uh, I think was in July of 2004. And then you were agreed to be reappointed to a full uh, five-year term in February of 2007. Uh, both of these bodies have a major impact on what takes place on Douglasville for the future, especially in the downtown area. Uh, why did you decide that you were willing to serve uh, in the first place uh, when you were asked to consider the appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission? Well, my family, Bill, has a, a we, we've been here for a long time. My, my dad's family has lived in Douglasville, Douglas County, um, ever since I can remember. And we um, have always lived in the downtown area. My husband and I lived in the historic district of, right over here on Campbellton Street. And I want to see what we have here preserved. I don't want it to go away. I don't want this city to die. Uh, we have a mall within a mile or two of us. And, and it's tough to keep a downtown going when you have a, a regional mall at that close. And I thought, you know, I, I gave it a lot of thought. Uh, the Historic Commission, because I don't want our old, beautiful old homes to, to disappear and McMansions pop up, as has been the case in a lot of other areas, I thought that was critical. And then on the DDA, to keep people in the downtown area, you have to have a reason for them to come here, whether it's a business, whether it's a restaurant, um, they want to go shopping. They want to do, I think, everything right here in downtown. A lot of people don't want to be at the mall all the time. Right. They want to live, work, and play downtown. Right. And that's one of the reasons, or the main reason why I wanted to be on these boards and see if I could make a difference. Very good. So, in a sense, you started by being on the Historic Preservation mm -hmm. Commission to look at that. how do we keep the good things that we have mm -hmm. and there with the downtown development authority how we can take and build on the good things so that's that, exactly that right. uh, uh, so that's almost a progression you might say mm -hmm. as, as you have looked at moving from the HPC to the DDA. Mm -hmm. uh, with the downtown development authority mm -hmm. I know that there are a lot of things that are going on in mm -hmm. the downtown area at this time uh, just tell me some of the things that the DDA is involved with. Well, you know, we've got uh, two new restaurants that are um, we hope to, to get up and running pretty soon. One of them um, is the Irish Bread Pub. The people uh, that own that talked about it at our strategic planning session a couple of weeks ago. We had one of the owners on the uh, panel there. Uh, we also have Island Flavors, who has expressed an interest in some property down on the lower end of Broad Street here. We're hoping that that will come to, to pass. We would also like to see some retail 
some more retail come here. We'd like, if, if people are standing in line for 45 minutes for a table at Gumbo's, we'd like for them to have some place right. to mosey in and, and spend some dollars and, and um, uh, visit and hope that they would think, gosh, I need to come back to visit that store again. So we've got those going on. We also have our open house, which is October 3rd at 1130. And we would like to encourage anybody that's thinking about uh, moving their business to downtown to come to that uh, open house because we have Daniel Jackson uh, from the uh, Carroll County Chamber of Commerce is going to be here. He's not only going to talk about the importance of the Main Street program, but also the importance of downtown and, and uh, that we need to keep them vital and, and, uh, and going and not just let them die. All right. Very good. And for people who may wish to come to that on October 3rd, mm -hmm. uh, be more than welcome, I'm sure. They would be. And if they can't, if they will get in touch with our uh, uh, downtown uh, Main Street office, manager. Main Street mm -hmm. manager, mm -hmm. we'll be delighted to make sure that they have that information mm -hmm. provided to them. That's right. Well, and they can call and, and uh, just to let you know this, they can call an RSVP to okay. the Welcome Center. Okay. If they just call the city, ask for the Welcome Center, they can call an RSVP and let them know that they are coming Great. to the, to the luncheon. <laughs> well, you know, in our downtown area, several years ago, uh, we applied to be a livable cities uh, community. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were among the first to receive a grant from the Atlanta Regional Commission. And that propelled us to do a lot of things downtown. And, and actually, the impetus that that started with some of the streetscapes and other things that were done led us to uh, take some additional steps. Uh, uh, when we talk about the master plan and, and Mike Sizemore of the Sizemore Group that did the uh, Centennial Olympic Park, did Smyrna. Uh, his firm, of course, is uh, whom we have selected to mm -hmm. help us put together the master plan for, for downtown. But there are a lot of challenges, I know, with that. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of the challenges the DDA sees as we work on this master plan? Well, there are a lot of challenges because some people don't want change. Um, there, there's the challenge of just implementing the master plan. But I'm a firm believer if you have a plan, if you, if you know what you're aiming for, and you chip away at it, and you um, work toward that plan, then you can, you can make it happen. And uh, there are some, gonna be some challenges because in the master plan, part of what we would like to see is uh, Church Street becoming more of a viable area in our um, city. And we can have our street festivals and things like that. It's impossible on a state highway 78 over right. here to, to do anything like that. So we thought we'd move it over here, but there are a lot of, a lot of things that are gonna come to pass. And I think that people will be really excited about what's going on here and talking about, um, the, the streetscapes, I know they're, they're putting, um, talking about putting street lights down Campbellton Street to match the ones that are here in town. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to look really nice because that's a main corridor coming into town and that'll be really pretty. Um, we have a hydrangea festival that's going to take place next year, uh, the first weekend in June. And coming down Campbellton Street, that's going to be the parade. Um, everything's going to take place coming right through that corridor. All right. Well, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm reminded. Uh, uh, that, and I know there are skeptics to, to say, well, uh, are you really going to be able to do anything in downtown Douglas? Well, we believe the answer to that is yes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, the, the words in that uh, uh, stage play and, and movie South Pacific, it said, you know, if you don't have a dream, That's right. how are you going to have a dream come true? That's right. Uh, and, and you embody, I think, that dream for downtown Douglas for you and the other members of the DDA and the Historic Preservation mm -hmm. Commission, all of the citizens that are working with us, including some on ad hoc advisory committees, mm -hmm. uh, because I think uh, people come back and a decade from now, they'll see that uh, uh, you and your counterparts uh, working with the consultants and our city government officials, uh, that we really did make a, a difference and it will be a different Douglasville because of, of people like you. Well, thank you, Bill. And we I thank you for being with us today on, on the agenda. Thank you. Now available at the Douglasville Welcome Center, the 2007 Downtown Keepsake. This year's Keepsake is a beautiful depiction of the Farmers and Merchants Bank building at the corner of Broad and Campbellton Streets. Don't miss this opportunity to own your piece of historic downtown Douglasville. This year's downtown keepsake is available now 
at the Douglasville Welcome Center, 6694 Broad Street, next to O'Neill Plaza. Well, welcome back to On the Agenda. It's my pleasure now to welcome Sam Hudson, a member of Keep Douglasville Beautiful Board. Uh, delighted to have you with us this afternoon. You know, the Keep Douglasville Beautiful organization, which the city of Douglasville started several years ago, uh, actually grew out of an interest that some of our elected officials and community leaders had in making sure that we took steps to make this a more attractive, a more livable community. And we became aware, of course, of Keep America Beautiful, Keep Georgia Beautiful. We went, actually, Sam, to several of the annual uh, luncheons that they had of Keep Georgia Beautiful uh, and said, you know, we believe that would be good for Douglasville. And so we started the Keep Douglasville Beautiful organization, uh, selected Chan Weeks to be our executive director, and she's still in that position, even as we've uh, developed over these last few years. I know you were appointed uh, to the Keep Douglasville Beautiful Board uh, in December of 2005. Uh, so you've been on the board now for some months. Uh, but tell me why you decided uh, to accept uh, the invitation to be an applicant for that uh, uh, position and, and what made you decide, yes, I'll be willing to serve my community by being on this board. Well, I'm a lifelong resident of the city of Douglasville and I currently live in the downtown area. So I have a vested interest in keeping Douglasville beautiful and all the missions that it has and all the initiatives that it has. And the best way to really affect change and getting involved in something like that is to get involved in a board such as Keep Douglasville Beautiful. So it all comes down to increasing the quality of life, which is what we all want, and a livable, beautiful community that supports recycling and anti-litter is certainly a, a way to get started on that, and that's simply why I do that. And, and that's why uh, my, my wife and myself are both involved in lots of other initiatives because when you live in Douglasville, you want to, as a volunteer and as a citizen, get as much involvement as you possibly can. Right. Well, you know, I'm not sure how many people uh, really think about Keep Douglasville Beautiful being a lot of involvement with recycling and, and uh, things of that nature. Actually, our Keep Douglasville Beautiful operation is part of our sanitation department because uh, we feel like that, that sanitation department activities is far more than simply picking up trash and garbage. Uh, we also have street sweeping. We have uh, other programs that uh, we seek to deal with, with what has occurred when people have thrown away trash and put out garbage. Uh, but in addition, we want to take some steps to try to get people to be more mindful that uh, they need to take affirmative uh, uh, steps to, to be sure that we keep our community clean and, and uh, uh, the board and Chan Weeks they do a great job of, of promoting what it is in Douglasville that we can do to make sure that uh, when you're out in the community that it just looks better than, than it did a few years ago. Uh, I know you have a lot of activities going on. Uh, can you just share with us some of the things that Keep Douglasville Beautiful is involved with at this time? Sure, we do have a lot of activities. One thing that we're working on now with one of our partners, the Douglasville uh, Local Chapter of Habitat for Humanity, is a initiative to start using recyclable or reusable shopping bags. As you know, when you go to the grocery store, it seems like you get a separate plastic bag for every grocery item. Well, there's alternative to that. That's a wasteful uh, practice. Uh, plastic really doesn't recycle well, but there are reusable shopping bags available that are handy, they're easier, and they certainly cut down on that kind of clutter and waste. Uh, Habitat is a good partner for us because we share a lot of the same initiatives and same mission. They have the 21st Century Challenge that is enhances the beautification of neighborhoods, and that's all. That's what we're about at Keep Douglasville Beautiful as well. And uh, also coming up Christmas, as always, we have. Uh, bring one for the chipper where people can bring in their old Christmas trees to be recycled. This year we're talking about doing something a little bit different and extra and having a container for all of your uh, wrapping paper. I mean, just think on Christmas morning when all the wrapping paper is floating around the room instead of putting it into the trash and uh, throwing it in the fireplace and this way you can actually recycle it. So that's a couple of different things we've got going on. And of course the ongoing thing is education. We want to get into the schools, talk to the children while they're young about recycling, about the science behind recycling, aluminum cans, water use, things of that nature. That never stops, and we've had a lot of good inroads into the local school system by doing those type of things. Very good. 
I remember several years ago when uh, the city of Douglasville be became one of the leaders in the state in trying to encourage people not only to recycle, uh, but to uh, make sure that that we gave incentives uh, for people to recycle. And, and, uh, and we still uh, have a lot of interest in making sure that our community uh, at least has the, the option of people recycling. And you mentioned uh, the uh, uh, bags at the grocery store. Of, of course, uh, uh, as you're out, people driving down the streets, uh, unfortunately, we do see that there are a lot of people who simply throw litter out on the side of the road. And, and uh, the city of Douglasville uh, took steps a few years ago to try to beef up the manpower using uh, inmate labor, community service workers, and now people from the West Georgia boot camp. Uh, uh, saves us a lot of money to, to have uh, those individuals involved in this, but try to, to pick up debris from our streets. Uh, and you know, uh, the way that, that we uh, staff a lot of the Keep Douglas for Beautiful uh, or finance a lot of the Keep Douglas for Beautiful activities and, and also in our sanitation department is because of, of the uh, fees paid by commercial establishments uh, in their sanitation rates. And so we think that's very appropriate and, and gives businesses actually an opportunity to help in that way to make sure that, that uh, our community stays very clean. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you, uh, just as we uh, move to conclude this part, uh, uh, Sam, is uh, what do you see as some of the major challenges over the next year or so for the Keep Douglas for a Beautiful operation? Well, the whole topics about recycling and, and litter have been around for a long time. And our biggest challenge is make sure that those topics stay fresh on the top of everyone's mind because Keep America Beautiful actually started in the 50s. And as you know, President Linda Johnson's wife, Lady Bird, was actually the first one who really brought it back to the forefront as far as anti-litter and all of our anti-littering campaigns. But that was in the 60s. And of course, recycling uh, had its moment in the headlines uh, probably starting in the 70s. But now here we are in the 21st century, and those issues are more important than ever. So it's up to us to keep that on the tip of everyone's tongues, have everyone thinking about it, practicing it, and using it. And that's the kind of uh, things that uh, is a big challenge, but we're up to the challenge, and I think we're making some nice inroads. And of course, these type of uh, educational uh, aspects that we're doing, the issues that we're facing, uh, you can learn more about it. Uh, just visit our website at keepdouglasfullbeautiful.org. We've got things changing every month, and uh, we just want people to be involved and make sure that recycling and anti-litter is on the top of their minds as well. Great. I think that's a wonderful way uh, for not only the city of Douglasville to operate, but especially involving citizens such as yourself. Uh, you know, just in closing, one of the projects that Keep Douglasville Beautiful did uh, a couple of years ago that uh, has become a landmark in Douglasville, of course, is Freedom Island. Uh, and, and that certainly is not only a patriotic spot as you come off of I-20 and start toward Douglasville, uh, downtown Douglasville on Camelton Street, uh, but it also is, is a very attractive, it's, it's a, uh, a nice green spot uh, uh, there, and we're delighted with the work that Keep Douglas for Beautiful uh, did on that. Uh, but we thank you for being with us uh, today, uh, and uh, remember, all of you, if you would, not only to join me uh, next time, uh, but also to remember to recycle and, and to make sure that you're doing your part to keep our community clean. This is Bill Osmond on the agenda. Thank you for joining me today. And if you have an interest in serving on one of Douglasville's boards, committees, or commissions, please get in touch with the city manager's office. This is City Manager Bill Osmond with another edition of On the Agenda. <laughs>